All right, guys, the time has finally come. You've all been watching my videos. You've been commenting every video about how my windshield is cracked, and I get it. It's pretty annoying having to watch it myself driving, and I can imagine it's very annoying having to watch that on the TV screen or your phone or whatever you watch it on. So we're finally gonna get this thing fixed. And I've been meaning to get it fixed, but I've been so busy with stuff. And now that the beta came out and you guys were staring at it a lot more, I figured it's probably time to get this done. So hopefully through this experience, you'll see how simple this is. We'll look at the price of it and we'll go through this whole process front to beginning. So let's get started here. So first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into our Tesla app, okay? Once we're inside the Tesla app, we're gonna go down to the very bottom. We're gonna go down here to service. We're gonna click on schedule service. On the very top there you see it says collision and glass repair, collision and glass. We're gonna click on the windshield and top glass. Then we're gonna complete the description. A rock hit my windshield and it is now split down the middle and my viewers are annoyed. Next we hit next. It then wants five attachments. Okay, so I just took the photos real quick so I'm gonna add them now into this list. And you can only upload one at a time. I would definitely try and get a close up shot so that we can really see the actual source of what happened. Okay, next I'm gonna hit next, put in my address, pick a time that actually works, and then you're just gonna hit schedule service. So instantly there you get an email confirmation that says that it's been uh, confirmed. And then what's gonna happen is you're, you're, they're gonna begin the kind of reviewing your order and then they'll contact you if they have any further questions and all that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call my actual insurance company and see what they have to say about you know, my coverage. And you can see there that once it's scheduled, it actually tells you right there under service that November 2nd at 3 p.m. will be my upcoming appointment. So you have that right there front and center. Now before I call my insurance company, I wanna get my policy number, make sure I know exactly what I have. Okay, so here's what I know so far. So I go through a company called Progressive, okay, insurance. They have a $500 deductible, at least the plan I'm on has a $500 deductible. But that's only if you go straight through you know, one of their providers. You can go to one of their stores. But a lot of companies like Tesla, they don't work with insurers, so you have to pay out of pocket. So what you have to do then, or what I have to do in my situation working directly with Tesla, is I have to go to Tesla, pay for the windshield out of pocket, and then I have to submit my invoice back to Progressive through the reimbursement email, and then they'll reimburse me for the difference, you know, less my deductible. So if it's $1,500 to replace the windshield or $2,400 or whatever it is, then they will supposedly pay all but $500 of that. So tomorrow when the reimbursement branch opens back up, I'm going to give them a call and I'm going to see what exactly their reimbursement program is. And then from there, all we got to do is wait for our appointment. All right, now it's the next day. And since then, I have gotten some new messages. The first message was them just saying that they're going to be reviewing the appointment and then they'll get back to me and all that. The second one was saying how they're very sorry to hear about my damage and that Tesla does not accept or work with insurance and that I'll need to pay for it in full and then work out something with my insurance company. So that's in the messages. And then the very bottom, you can click view, it'll take you back to the estimate page where it says my cost estimate is $1,004.67. Now you can click on view estimate and here it'll break it down for you. It says that my total for the actual repair is $912.50. And the taxes on it are $92.17, making the total $1,004.67. Now you can click even more detail and go click on view estimate details on the very bottom there. And it'll show you like a PDF breakdown of the entire operation. Underneath that, it tells you when your appointment date is and then the last step being the payment. So now what's gonna happen is after I leave Tesla and I've paid you know, my premium, my thousand dollars or so, I'm gonna go home and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the invoice that they give me and I'm gonna email it to my insurance company, Progressive. Now remember my deductible is $500. So what they're gonna do or what they should do is refund me all except that $500. So basically they're gonna pay 500 and I'm gonna pay $500. Now I am curious though, just real quick before we get out to the actual install and replacement, how much did you guys pay for your windshield replacement? I know a lot of people have to replace their windshields. I've heard numbers all up to $2,500 and this is only a thousand. I'm wondering why. So let me know what you guys paid. All right, now tomorrow is my appointment. And so we've gotten a few notifications that come the day right before. So here we go. 
I'm gonna go in here to my service, I tap on that, and then here's where you go to find all these messages I'm talking about. See how in the bottom right hand corner there's a little bit of, kind of like a text message symbol? You press on that and it's gonna pull up all your communication. And by the way, the service has been phenomenal. Okay, I know that there used to be like some issues with this stuff in the past, but my service has been great. You can see here our conversation that I've had. So one of the things that I asked about was, am I gonna be able to just stay there, have them work on the car and then me take it home? And they said, no, it's gonna be basically an all day appointment, right? And I'm like, oh, I didn't really plan for that. And I asked them, do you have a car that I could use? Uh, they explained to me, they said, no, we don't you know, let you know if you have that or not until the actual day of the appointment. And if we don't have one available for you, then we will give you vouchers for the Uber ride or some kind of ride share service. But the thing is, is that you gotta ask for them and they'll give them to you. So if you're going in there, just remember, don't just assume you're gonna just Uber your way back. Ask for some help from that and they'll give you some vouchers for that. They've done that for me twice now. Uh, yeah, twice now. So it does happen. And then I think this is more because of COVID times. When you get there, they give you a link right there in your phone and the message that you click on and then you communicate to them that you are there at the appointment. You don't just walk into the door, let them know you're there and then they'll let you know when it's time to come in and get you a service and set up and make sure they know what they're doing to your car. I said, thanks. And they said, you're welcome just a few minutes later. So this whole conversation took place at, let's see, what is it? 8.30 PM at night. This just went down a little bit ago. And uh, the whole thing was wrapped up in about five minutes. That's how fast their communication was. So really impressive. So a couple of things to point out. Tesla right now currently has my car. I've Ubered home and they completely paid for Uber. What they did was we had a conversation with a guy who came out to my car. I never went in there. I pressed the little link that they gave me. I filled out who I was and then they came out to my car and then he gave me $200 voucher for Uber, which means that they paid for me to basically get home and then to come back the next day. Also check this out, take a look at the app. When you open it when it's in service like this, there's nothing there to do. That's all there is. There is no special screen. The service screen is the only one that you can actually see. On my little widget, on my close screen here, what I did was I went up there just thinking, oh, I should check my car and make sure it's locked. I went in there, tried locking it, and it popped up saying I was unable to do that. I'm like, oh yeah, right, there's people working on it. So what they do is they shut everything down, all your controls for your car down so that you can't mess with them, turn on the music, mess with the heat, whatever, while they're working on the car. Okay, now a quick tip if you're using the actual Uber app to get home if you're receiving those credits because it actually comes in as a voucher and they're a little bit confusing to actually learn how to use. So if you click on the voucher, it's gonna take you to your available voucher and it shows I have $133 remaining on mine because I obviously came home with it. And what, how these work is that when you go to actually log your trip, it's going to look like it's you paying for it. It actually showed 100% the same way it did when I normally do it, coming from my Apple card. But then it pops up after you're done the ride and it says on there that it was actually taken from the voucher and it shows there at $133. And then when they ask for a tip at the end, that tip also comes out of that voucher, even though you don't actually say apply this voucher. So tomorrow morning, I'll go back up and pick up the car and we're gonna have a clean windshield. And we're done. The car is finally fixed. We finally have a clean, crisp windshield. Just take a look at how nice that looks. I just, you know, I didn't realize how bad it was until they replaced it. But let's finish talking about the experience. So what happened was the Uber driver came in the morning. There was a little bit of confusion with the Uber voucher this morning as well. When I went to go use Uber, the voucher was gone. And apparently there's a geofence around Tesla. When they took it out for a little test drive, it kind of triggered that and canceled the voucher. It's what they do to kind of clean it up so they don't have like random 30 and 40, $50 vouchers floating around out there people are using to go out to dinner or something. Uh, and so I had to just call them. They resent me the voucher. It was no big deal. And you can call them. You got to remember that you can call Tesla and talk to the service center. So when I got there, I walked to the door. They basically made sure that I had paid because you pay through the app. When the car is done, you'll get a, a little notice saying that's okay. You can go ahead and pay. So you pay for it. And then we basically just brought me my car and I left. So here's something to remember after a new windshield gets put on. Those cameras were remounted on your window. So that means that they have to recalibrate. So if you get in your car and you try to put on autopilot, it's not gonna turn on. 
you have to wait for it to calibrate. And so where you actually see this happening is around the steering wheel. And you can see here on my car that as I'm driving and very, very fast forward, that the car is actually, you know, calibrating it through the city, through the highway and so on. And it takes about seven miles, 6.8 miles exactly was when my car actually finally calibrated. So it takes a little bit of time driving it. And you're probably used to this from when you bought the car. I probably had a similar thing. And altogether, it was probably somewhere around 10 minutes. One other thing I will warn you of, and that is while my service was being active and my car was not in completed status, I was getting responses very, very quickly from Tesla anytime I sent a text message during business hours. But once it was completed and it was no longer in the active status, I sent three text messages this morning, didn't res or I don't know if messages, but three messages to them, and none of them went through. There was no response at all. It wasn't until I called, they were like, oh yeah, and they instantly helped me. So keep that in mind, there must be a different priority to ones that are completed versus ones that are not. Or maybe it was just a fluke thing for me, but just something to realize if you're having trouble, just call them. So if you found this helpful or at least entertaining, please take a second and consider subscribing to the channel and definitely hit that like button for me. My channel is all based upon education, so there'll be tons more of this to come and I'll see you guys on the next video.